Before we get to today's episode about mindset, I want to remind you guys, it's a new year. It's 2018. You want to double your sales? Radio. You got to get on radio, guys. I mean, the top producers in your market are all doing radio. I'm not sure why you're not. Go to MyRadioExpert.com, fill out the Getting Started sheet, and let's see if you're a good fit. It's what we do. Today's episode is also brought to you by Copy and Send. Look, the most valuable spoke in your business is your database. You go out, you meet people, you get their cards, you go out to networking events, you get their cards. Hopefully, you put them into your autoresponder, your database. But you know what I know? You probably don't talk with them. You don't reach, you don't email them enough. We solve the what do I say, how do I say it problem with copy and send. We have a library of 300 email templates designed for you to copy, cut, paste, and send. The easiest way. To, to, I mean, this is this is like passive income. Guys, go sign up, copyandsend.com. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Today's episode, um, today's guest, look, here's he wrote a book about mindset. Now, mindset's an interesting topic because you can think about mindset in terms of having an abundance mindset or a poverty mindset. We often talk about that, that on the show, right? Um, if you have an abundance mindset, you don't, you're, you don't mind spending money to make money. Um, the, those people with a poverty mindset, um, they always want to hold on to what they have. They never want to take any risk and, uh, you know, look, risk reward, right? There's a, there's like a very clear correlation. Um, but if you want to take that leap, you need the right mindset. Now, here's the other thing with mindset that, that, uh, that is less often talked about, even though the principles are in it have been around for the last hundred years, right? There's this whole, look, I don't want to get too woo here, but there is this whole notion of, you know, what you see in your mind, what you put your mind around or on, you know, you will manifest that. Right. And, and I, I'm a pretty big belief. I mean, this is Napoleon Hill, right? I'm, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know or haven't heard of. But man, if you put in your mind whatever you want, I, I don't care if that's a, you know, that's a summer house and a million dollars uh, or a Lear jet, whatever you put in your mind um, and you keep it in there. I mean, that's why people do vision boards, right? You will manifest it. So anyhow, so we, we talk a little bit about today, we talk a lot about mindset. So I hope you like it. Um, I think I did this one sometime this summer. All right, let's get to it. Uh, if you haven't, go to superagentslive.com. Give us a rating and review. Would love that. I, I hate asking for that, but go to iTunes, give us a rating and review, um, and uh, join the conversation on Twitter. I'm at Super Agents Live. All right, let's get to it. Today on the show, we're doing something a little bit different. You know, I will tell you that uh, I firmly believe that when you go out and start to build your business, mindset is one of the things that you have to start first, right? Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. Right? It's all about what is in your head. What What is the long-term goal place you want to get to? And if you're not appropriately wrenched up in your head, uh, you're going to get off track. Today's guest is, that's his whole thing. I'm thrilled to welcome Dan LaFave. Dan. Dan, before we get into you know what you do, what you teach, um, take a minute and tell us a little about who Dan is. Well, sure. Um, well, currently, uh, my uh, my life is all about coaching, and it's all about uh, building programs online and, uh, and having uh, you know an influence in the world, impact and influence in the world that uh, you know people can uh, actually have control over their lives. But uh, I mean, if you want to go back, you know, way back in time. Uh, you know, my, my life started, uh, you know, in a small town. I grew up uh, in, a, in a small town north of Toronto, Canada, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a lifestyle where, uh, you know, we played hockey and <laughs> ice hockey and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and one of the things that, you know, was kind of significant in my life when I was a kid, when I was seven years old, we were going to a hockey tournament and we were in a car accident. We got hit head on mm. and uh, three people died in that accident, two mm. people in the car I was in and uh, one person, the other person that hit us. 
and uh, and I was in a coma for three days. So that was uh, you know, sort of a, a big you know, point in my life where, you know, kind of, I think it shifted things for me because, you know, I don't think you can take a, a such a hard hit in the head uh, without uh, some changes going on. But, uh, you know, I, I think I looked at life a little bit differently and, and um, you know, and anyway, I grew up in a family business. My dad was a butcher and we had a grocery store and a butcher shop. And uh, so I grew up in kind of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial business and I devoted about 10 years of my life to that. And, um, you know, off and on throughout school and, and through summertime, I, I was worked in that business and weekends or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, but I, I think I had an entrepreneurial spirit anyway, because, you know, I'd ride my bike and go and pick raspberries and get a you know buck a pint or something like that for picking raspberries. So, you know, I was always looking out for, for ways of, uh, uh, you know, making some money or, or doing something in the world. But, uh, you know, that's sort of sort of the beginnings of uh, my entrepreneurial spirit. I ran a painting business at a university. Uh, that that didn't succeed very well. I did about thirty, forty thousand sales, but that's not very good for uh, for painting business, especially if it's, a, if it's kind of a franchise. But um, I did that, and, and then I spent many, many years in corporate, and I helped companies build uh, their businesses. Uh, I actually helped my brother build a business to a million dollars in three years and uh from from about 200,000 and uh and then later on I helped businesses grow by the millions and I did commercial real estate for a, a landlord and uh I also um uh I also worked uh, for, for different companies telecom related companies and uh and generated lots and lots of uh revenue streams for them as well so that entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit that that you know you saw <clears throat> When you're younger, right, picking raspberries or whatever, to what end? Like, what what was it? Was it was it? Did you wanted money? Did did you want a different life? Did you want to get out of that you know small town? What was the thing that that you think was behind that, driving that? It's hard to say, but you know, I, I guess you know, uh, I just it was opportunities, right? It was an opportunity for me to generate some income to to buy the things I want. Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, you know the. The, the thing that I wanted to do was go buy uh, stuff at the store. You know, maybe, maybe it was, uh, could have been candy or something like that. Right. But, but you know, um, I, it was just the ability to have my own freedom and the ability to get the things that I want. There was nothing that I wanted to get out of that town or anything like that. Uh, there was, there was no ambition at that point in time, but, uh, uh certainly, um, you know, I, I, I was open and I wanted to, uh, to excel in life. And I, you know, if it was, uh, riding my bike, you know, a few miles or 10 miles or whatever and, you know, pick raspberries and make some money. Great. Then I have some spending money. I have freedom, right? I mean, I, I mean, if you want to nail it down, I guess it's freedom, right? I had, I had more freedom. I could buy what I wanted. To, sure. well, not necessarily what, no, right, I could right. buy something anyway. <laughs> okay. And then, so let's fast forward just a little bit because I, I want to, I'm trying to get a sense of, of, you know, you, your dad being a butcher, right? So I'm sure he mm-hmm. preached to you work ethic. I'm sure the guy was up at, you know, five or I'm sorry, four in the morning, like butchering, uh, right? I mean, I, I, I knew a butcher and, you know, his, his, uh, his, uh, uh, you know, my breakfast was his lunch, right? Or, or, you know, even later, um, <laughs> when we, so you get to university, you start now with that painting company that you started, was that with student painters? Yeah. Yeah. It was a student painting, student painters business. And of course they take the majority of the profits, but uh, yeah. But, that, that's well, the deal. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> what year was that? Oh God. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, probably uh, 1992 or 93. Somewhere oh, there. wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so yeah. I, I did the same thing. I was at UCSD. I did the same thing. Um, uh, so we probably know some of the, some of the, some of the, the helmet was the guy that was the top. Of the, anyhow, um, so we probably know yeah, some of the same I people. So. Yeah. Um, so why didn't that? So you have this entrepreneurial spirit. You want freedom. Um, student painters was relatively easy, right? You walk down the street and go, "Hey, uh, you know, my name's Toby. You know, uh, can I give you a free estimate, a uh, free house painting estimate?" Was was it? F- that you, I would say that business for you failed because I was doing twenty thousand dollars a month, and that was the that was what no or forty thousand dollars a month. That was kind of what you wanted to do. You did for the whole summer, you know, forty grand. Was it hmm. that is this? Can we tie this back into a failed mindset for you, or or you were just not good at sales? Uh, it probably was that I wasn't so good at sales. But, uh, and even also building teams of people, but, um, you know, there was a few different factors. I mean, if I was, 
to, to say, you know, why I thought then it was no good is because I wanted a certain territory where I knew people and where I was comfortable in, which is this town called Barrie, and I didn't get it. I got this other small hick town, even a smaller town, right? Okay. And, uh, and so I think, you know, my mindset at the gate there was like, you know, I don't know anybody here, and I've got to, you know, I've got to go around and get to know the place and everything else, right? And, uh, but I, you know, um, it, it was just, it was a, a beginning for me, right? I, I didn't have any experience. I didn't have any help. Uh, necessarily and uh, I didn't really have you know good leadership showing me the way uh, but you know I think it just it, it's something I needed to to experience at that point in time and, and, and what I'm trying to do Dan I'm trying to get a feeling uh, and, and give the audience a sense of of your your arc right your 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 professional arc so you know so you, so you start this uh, uh, this company in, at in university it didn't work you go you finish university and then you go out and, and actually start turning businesses around what was the, what what were some of the drivers some of the mechanics that that changed along the way from failure to then success well I, I think one of the uh, the core things was, um, you know, I didn't know my potential. And, uh, I mean, I had all sorts of people telling me my potential. And, they, you know, especially if it was a, a uh, say, a, a parent of a girlfriend or something like that, and they're kind of looking at me saying, yeah, you're, you know, your brother's paying you thirty, forty thousand 40000 a year for what you're doing. And, and that's not a lot of money, right? And I guess I didn't have any real sense of what was uh, good money. And uh, I think the turning point was when I, uh, when I got recruited. And I got recruited by a telecom company and, uh, and they basically doubled my income and then they doubled it again. Right. So I, I started realizing my potential and, um, and, you know, actually the, the funny thing was about that business, um, in, in telecom, they, you know, if you have a lot of wireless sites around, they were retrofitting sites and they had never done this before. So when I walked in the door, all the managers were shaking my hand and saying, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. And, and I, after a while I turned to my manager, I'm like, what the hell is going on? why you know why all this uh you know naysay or good luck type attitude and i guess because they hadn't done this project before so i took this 25 million dollar project and i made it work and uh you know so i I think you know i just stared in the face of adversity and i was able to make this work and over a two-year period i got it fine tuned and running smoothly and um you know so i think that was kind of the catalyst where i saw my ability my potential to produce and get things organized in a really efficient manner Okay, so 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 just a, a, a realization that you know you can do it, you, that you, that you could do it. Um, okay, so again, Dan, how do we get how do we get from there to where we are today with you, um, um, and and you now coaching people along the way? How, how just string those two g- g- get pieces together, and then we'll talk about what you're actually doing right now. Sure, sure. Well, you know, if you're going to bridge that gap, I mean, it, it has to do with a lot of experiences, a lot of hard work and failures, ups and downs, right? And, uh, you know, and, and it, it wasn't a smooth ride by any means. Uh, but I, I think what, um, what really got to me where I am today is because uh, I just sort of buckled down and I just, I just did whatever I had to do to get the, to get the results. And, uh, and I guess, fortunately, in a way, there was no sales involved. Um, I mean, I had, you know, basically... Uh, you know, in terms of revenues, uh, this this one company I work for, I mean, they had a massive por- por- portfolio of residential buildings, 360 plus buildings. And, you know, and I was able to turn all this commercial revenue from that. And, um, you know, I, I think my key is that I'm able to develop relationships really well, get things organized, and then, and then start producing. Uh, you know, I, I just, I know how to build it from that standpoint. I mean, the student works painting business, yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> you know, that wasn't meant to be, but it was, you know, failures lead to successes, right? And so, um, you know, and, and I built myself up to a point where, yeah, I mean, I can get, you know, a director position and things like that. And I did, but that just didn't, uh, that didn't turn my crank. In fact, if you want to bridge this gap, what happened was at the sort of the end of my corporate career, I got fired and that was the, the catalyst. Uh, I got recruited by a company. They took me in after a few months. They said, this isn't working out. See you later. And uh, they fired me. And I just step, took a step back and said, okay, whoa, wait a second. I got to look at the world a little differently here. And I got to maybe see where I'm going here because this isn't fun and I'm not having a good time and I'm not making any money. Well, not the kind of money that I thought I would make anyway, but uh, um, you know, that's, that's sort of where it's led me to. Do you know, do you know, Augmentino? Do you know who yeah. he is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, short story then to add to that. So, at the end of all of this stuff, getting fired and everything like that, I start some soul searching and I get led to Ogmandino 
through a friend of mine. He owns a, a real estate company. And uh, so he gives me this book, The Ten Scrolls. And he says, do this. Study it. Read it. So I do it. If you know what the scrolls are, it's basically read the scrolls three times a day for 30 days, 90 times in a month. And you go through 10 of them. So I did that. And it led me to Dave Blanchard, who's the CEO of Ogmandino, because Ogmandino is no longer here. Of course, he's, he's long gone. But it led me to Dave. And I was, I, after I got fired, I did the soul searching. I got led to a network marketing business through my friend's father, who is, you know, doing very well, multi-millions. And I'm going down to Provo, Utah. So I'm fl- flying to Salt Lake City. Well, long story short, Dave Blanchard lives in Salt Lake City. I messaged him because I looked him up and I bought some of his books and distributed them to my friends. He gave me eight weeks of coaching in exchange. And then Dave invites me to stay at his house. And then that was kind of, I think, even more of a a sign, step forward, move this way. And uh, Dave said something to me when I was visiting him. He said, you know, I think you'd make a great coach. Dave and I kind of, you know, didn't reconnect afterwards when I came back. But I did reconnect, or sorry, I did connect with Bob Proctor. A friend of mine put me in touch with Bob Proctor. Same thing happened. I was talking to Bob's team. They said, let's get Bob on the phone. Again, I'm being called a step forward. And Bob said something similar to me. You know, I didn't have a job or anything like that. I already bought $7,000 worth of Bob's programs, and I ended up investing another thirteen. So I poured out $20,000 to learn from him so I could take this kind of leap forward or step forward. Okay. So, so... So if I look at your career, Dan, um, you, again, going back to student painters or student works, whatever you want to call it, right? When you had to build your own organization, uh, you didn't make that work, at least then. Um, and the two successes you had were within an organization, right? So, so, so the, 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 the foundation was there, the people was there, the capital was there, and you know you seem to be, uh, and same thing with your real estate career, right? When you can move pieces around the board with the foundation there, um, you seem to be, from what I'm hearing, right? You seem to be able to, to, to make that work in a, in, a, in a big way. How, how you know, somebody like you, you know, a Proctor or whoever is going to say, hey, I think you can be a good coach. How does, how does, and, and listen, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hitting on you here. I'm not pushing on you. So don't, don't take it the wrong way. But, you know, how does somebody who has not been able to build uh, previously a successful organization from the ground up, how, how do you go out and coach someone and, 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 you know, get them to do something that you fundamentally have never done? Well, it's not that I've never done it. I mean, that's that's back then, right? Like that student was thinking is twenty years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was a, that's the first experience, right? So, yeah. So you know, that's those are those experiences. And yes, granted, uh, you know, when you go in, you go into an organization, they have finance departments and so on. They have people uh, there to help run your business. But the uh, the key to me having established my business now is that I did go and learn from mentors, and I did attach myself and learn to learn from mentors that are building their businesses online and doing coaching and I study and learn from them and the unique thing about me is I'm, I'm persistent I'm, I'm you know I'm a pit bull and I, I'm always going to move forward and persist and do whatever I have to do to get the results that I want um, you know I mean you probably heard it before though I mean how many failures does somebody have before they reach a success I don't know it's, it's seven it's it's supposed to be <laughs> seven <laughs> It's, I mean, okay. along the way, from, for, I mean, so this is just numbers, but, you know, it's supposed to be seven failures and typically, uh, and this is this is maybe an old stat, but three bankruptcies before an entrepreneur will will make it, right? And, and actually, you know, build something super successful. So, yeah, I'm look, again, I'm not pushing on you. I, I think the only uh, the only reason I bring this out, Dan, is, is you know, w- w- there's a quote we've all heard, right? Those who can do and those who can't teach. And I see too many people... In, in, you know, there's too many 21 year old quote unquote life coaches out there, right? What have you done? How are you going to teach me? I mean, I, I literally have talked to these people and I've done all sorts of stuff. I've been super successful and I see, you know, some 21 year old girl I meet on a plane is going to try to coach me. I'm like, what have you done? So, I mean, I just, I think I, there's too many people, you know, putting on a t shirt that says I'm a coach when, when they're not. So, I just, I, again, I, I honestly wanted to give you a chance to 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 you know talk about that notion a little bit. Well, no, you're you're definitely right. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who are calling themselves coaches, and uh, and they're going about it uh, from a standpoint that they can teach anybody, and and that's not the that's not the truth. Um, but 
here's the unique thing that I realized about myself, and, and we all have different skills and purposes and abilities and so on, but I, I noticed this about myself. I always attract leaders, and I can befriend leaders very easily. And, um, and so those are the kind of people that I can associate with very easily, very readily, and, and I can help them. And the reason why I can help them is because I have perspective. I'm very objective about it. It's not about how successful I've been. It's about how I can get their mental furniture rearranged so that they can succeed. That's where I really excel at because I'm not, I'm not in their business. I'm not trying to solve their specific business problem. I'm just trying to get their head aligned with the solution, the way out. And that's what I do. I mean, if you, you, you read Napoleon Hill, I think, right? So yeah. Think and Grow Rich, I Wouldn't the Devil. If you read Joseph Murphy, The Power of Subconscious Mind. I mean, these are all powers of the mind. I mean, 96, 98% of our results, behaviors, and actions come out of our subconscious mind. Okay. It, it's a scientific, you know, scientifically tested and proven and so on. If you agree with that, then, you know, why aren't we using our minds more effectively? Okay. I mean, yeah. I, could teach, I could teach anybody anything about how to use their mind better, but it's business that I'm really good at. Why? Because, you know, in terms of generating revenue, in terms of um, getting their, their heads straight on what they want and focusing on it and getting it done, that's where I can excel. And I can help them turn around very easily. I mean, most people get stuck in their own minds and they don't know how to get the hell out. Okay. So, so I mean, look, so you've been doing this for a long time. Um, you know, you've seen and, and, and met a, a ton of people. W- when you say help people rearrange the furniture in their head, is, is it, what are the thematically, what are the common things that you see? I mean, uh, you know, um, I, I'm sure you can see patterns with, you know, this, if you attract a certain kind of person, all leaders, you know, they're leaders for a reason. All, is there similarities in how their furniture is, is in disarray in their head? And, and, and what is the process to help people rearrange it in a, in a proper order? Yeah, well, there's definitely some things that are common amongst them. And, uh, you know, one of the, I mean, these are, these are things that are common amongst most people. But in terms of business owners and what I've seen is that they have a lot of self-doubt and uh, they, they don't know how to uh, arrange themselves so that they can get what they want. And as you know, we're creatures of habit, right? So they keep repeating these same patterns over and over and again and getting frustrated and angry. And, of course, that's low frequency and they just keep attracting more of the same stuff. And that's, that's a, a rut, right? I mean, if, if you think about it from a, from a context of our minds, we have faculties. We have, you know, these, the, these tools, these resources that we can use, uh, things like our perception. You know, I mean, how many people stop and start looking at things from a different angle? Most times they look at it from theirs and they just say, you know what, this isn't going to work. I, I remember I had a friend. I'll just tell you quickly. Hmm. I had a friend. He's running a business now. I don't know how well he's doing, but I think it's doing pretty well. I haven't talked to him in a while. But here's the thing. I remember him telling me, we crunched the numbers. It's not going to work. We're going to be closed the shop within 12 months or something like that. Well, he's now the president of that company and he's still running and it's still going well. And, you know, as far as I know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, again, I haven't talked to him personally. But, you know, he basically accepted that this thing is going to fail. But, you know, what if you took a different perspective on it? What if you started, you know, taking a, a different angle and say, okay, well, how can we approach this? How can we get out? I mean, if you, if you think of Napoleon Hill, you know, there's a way out, I'm going to find it. There's a way out, I'm going to find it. Right? If, you, if you keep that mentality, you will find it. And, you know, I, I even talked to a relative of mine recently. He's got a successful business overseas. And I asked him some questions, you know, why, why, why are you success, successful? What would you pass on to others? And, you know, he said, you know, you got to think about things. You got to really put your time and effort and think about things and look at different angles, sleep on things. And, you know, he's talking about how to use the subconscious mind. He just doesn't know that he's saying that, but that's it. I mean, the subconscious mind is where it's at. It's our hard drive. And most people dump stuff in there all the time, every day and don't get the results they want. I mean, think about it. What is, what is news? What's the media? It's garbage. It's endless trash that, you know, you, you could probably dismiss 95% of it, right? And take maybe whatever you want out. I mean, in terms of real estate, what do you need to see in the media every day? I, I don't know. I don't, I, I mean, I'm not sure what you're asking me. What, what do I need to see? I don't, I don't know, Dan. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, in terms of real estate, what would you need to see that's in the mainstream media in terms of that w- that would help you grow your business in, in real estate. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. No, I mean, I'm not, so look, let me go back. Let me go back because 
with your buddy whose business was going to close and you know anybody you know I, I think in a lot of ways you know we are uh, you're talking about the subconscious mind i think at you know at, at a subconscious level you know we're all animals fighting for survival right and and i think that uh, you know it's it's curious to me that you know that a business owner would be losing their business losing their livelihood you know potentially you know fighting for bankruptcy potentially losing their house right losing their whole lifestyle you know it's it's a, a bit peculiar that that what you're saying to me is those people wouldn't stop to to look at other angles and I, and I think that you know if you're in a fight for your life you know you're everything you see is going to be a weapon right so so what kind of people what I, I you know I'm just I'm just confused a little bit by what you're telling me right you know you're, you're talking to these leaders these entrepreneurs but the biggest thing that they have in common is self-doubt it, it seems it seems the opposite right that that person who who strikes out alone to, to to do something hard whether that's you know sailing you know across the ocean you know running across the you know arctic or starting their own business right the the self doubt is the last thing you have but what am i missing i don't know I, I don't know that that's true amongst everybody but let's just say i see that a common amongst entrepreneurs and here's the thing Everybody has certain things that they're comfortable with and things that they can do. And yes, if they're going to do something that seems like it's outside of their comfort zone, it's still probably within their potential or their ability. Where I see the self-doubt is they're doing things that they've never done before and, uh, you know, that, that, that they couldn't even fathom doing. And there's a little blockage. There's something in the back of their mind. And, you know, the, the blockages start at a young age. Zero to six years old is where the subconscious mind is programmed. It's all programmed back then. And whatever goes in stays in and it becomes habits throughout our lives. So generally, I mean, this is my perspective. I think that life shows us the things, the struggles that we need to see to overcome those things that were programmed into our mind. You know, we didn't, we couldn't say no, right? I mean, at that age, we just say yes. And everything we, we look up at our, our parents and our siblings and we say, they're right. They know everything. And I, I think I'll do whatever they say. And, uh, you know, so the thing is, when it comes to self-doubt and what I'm seeing amongst entrepreneurs that I've worked with is that they get to a point in their business in their life and uh, maybe it's you know if you think about the growth of a business zero to five that's where most businesses can grow pretty easily five to eight that's a bit of work eight to ten is where they have to do some rearranging and they have to uh, to, to muster up you know some more strength and and use their minds a little more effectively than they have before because that's the stage where um, you know this the self-doubt or this, uh, you know, I don't know how and things like that. And, and also, I, I see this too, especially if somebody's been in business for a while, they get into such a routine, such a habit that they're doing things in a way that aren't effective for them. And then when they try to shift and do something a little bit different, that's where they, they hit this roadblock and, and um, you know, that whatever, whatever doubt in their minds or whatever, uh, you know, limitations that are there are, are going to hold them back. And uh, I mean, it's, it's a hurdle. I mean, you think about it. I mean, most of us can take action and do things externally pretty easily. But how about internally? How can we do that and be effective at it and and go beyond where we where we finished? Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think it's fair. I mean, so so I want to I want to make sure that we're talking about the same things because you know we, here's what I see when. You know, whether going from zero to five people, five to eight, you know, eight to twelve, whatever, whatever number it is, you know, twelve to twenty. I, I think, I think one of the problems that I see is, 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 and this, this can tie into mindset, but you know, there's a certain, you need a certain sort of person, a certain sort of of skill set, certain you know, set of tools to start a pure startup, to start from nothing and and start to stitch it all together. Now, once as you grow. You need to change from being an operator into being a CEO, and 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 I think that 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 uh, that change, um, you going from an operator to a manager, for example, uh, that's where I think people fail, and and I think a lot of it has to do. You can you know again, I could tie it back to mindset because you know there's when we start a company. Um, again, me and two people, we ha there's a certain amount of capacity that two people have. Now, there's two ways to build a business, and I'm, I, I'm sure you know this, of course, Dan, but you can build a business and, and work at your capacity all the time, right? Whether it's two people, three people, four people, or you can hire extra people 
lower your your profit margin and buy more capacity in the hopes or in the belief that that new business will come and you can fill that capacity and i i, I think managing i think two things are happening in tandem with people is managing that capacity whether it's working right to the limit or having extra and 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 the change from you know uh, mindset wise going from an operator to a ceo or operator to a manager but but so so I, I'm again I'm just trying to we can leave the self doubt piece alone but um, I'm not is it is it self doubt that you're seeing or is it is it more a lack of skill set uh, or experience that that you're seeing? Well, I mean, I mean you could say it's skill set and experience, but the uh, you know the fact is like I, I think you hit on something on the head there, which is you know these. Uh, uh, these business owners, they get in the habit of doing things as an operator, like ma more like a how-to person. But meanwhile, they're a why type person. And I'll, I'll explain that. I mean, I, I think Steve Jobs, uh, I think we can agree that he's a why person or was a why person. And Steve Wozniak was a how-to person. Mm -hmm. And um, so in every business, if you're the why person, then you've got to continue being the why person. And if you've been the how and the why, let's say, you know, if you had an org chart and you were doing all the, all the parts of your business, and then at some point you started handing things off, you have to continue that process. Mm -hmm. It always there always has to be a delegation uh, of some kind, and um, you know you always have to keep stepping forward. I mean, my my theory is that you know even God can't steer a parked car, so you gotta, you got to be stepping forward and doing something. You know, um, and, and and I've embodied that. I mean, I co-authored a book with uh, some folks that you might recognize, like Deepak Chopra, Jack Canfield, Dennis Waitley. You know, and I can't tell you exactly, um, you know, how that came to be a concept in my mind, but. I was able to find the, the way and, and, and chart the path and, and go and get it. And, um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, you have to, you have to realize entrepreneurs are always stepping forward and doing something right. And, uh, and they have to, uh, you know, they have to realize uh, what the, uh, uh, you know, what, what's at stake here. And, um, you know, when it, when it comes to, you know, things like, uh, their self doubt. I'm talking about you know what's going on inside the mind. What's the limitations? What's the what's holding them back? I mean, if you think about it, anything that goes on in somebody's life has a, a direct correlation to what's going on in their mind. And if something's not happening in our lives, what's what's at uh, what's at the core? What's the what's the problem here? The problem is not external. And lots of people do think it's external. They start blaming and looking outside of themselves, but it is internal. It's an inside job. And that's why we have to get our minds focused on what we want, keep them on what we want as much as possible. What I 100% I agree. So how, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting in the picture a little bit. How, how does, how do you train people to think bigger, right? So it's one thing to say, I want to write a book. And, and that's, I mean, look, writing a book is a big undertaking. I know a, a ton of people have written books and, you know, three years, you know, they start it three years later, they're done. And like, if I would have known, I would have never done it. Um, but, but how does somebody like you think bigger than just writing a book and go, Hey, I want to co-author a book with Deepak Chopra and then go out and put that out in the universe and make that happen. How, let's specifically talk about you, Dan. How did you train yourself, tra train your subconscious, whatever, um, 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 to be able to think at that high of a level? Well, the, the key thing is, uh, is intention and repetition. So you always, have to, you always have to have your goal, of course, right? You set your goal, but you, you have to do something that's repetitive that's going to get you towards your goal. Um, I'll give you an example as to, to how I do this um, that I think anybody could relate to. So let's say Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Um, I took that book and I didn't just read it, but I studied it. And I didn't do it by myself, I formed a mastermind. So there was a group of us reading this book every day for 30 days, the same chapter every day for 30 days. So after the book was done, we read it 30 times. Um, that's the nature of our minds. We learn through repetition or emotional experience. Most of us can't tap into the emotional aspect. So why not do repetition? If you, I mean, if you can turn on your emotions and, and get to that level of the subconscious mind, great, do it. But for the average person, repetition. So what do I do? I do repetition. If there's something that I want, I focus my attention on it and not just once a day, but many times a day. And I keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And I find different angles. And then I start seeing uh, opportunities and resources and people show up and the ways to get there. Um, in, in terms of that book, you know, I don't even, 
I, I don't know, it's been many years now, but I don't even know that I really had a forethought about it or an intention about it. I mean, yes, I, I guess I had an intention for writing a book. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I went to an event and I, I saw this woman who was on a book and, and, and I ended up interacting with her at the event and, and, you know, two steps later I'm meeting with her and then, uh, you know, I find out from uh, her who the publisher is and I took that step and just kept moving forward. Um, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a divine plan, let's say, well, maybe there was a divine plan, but there wasn't any plan in my mind as to how it was going to happen. But, um, you know, it all comes from intention and the way to get to the things you want is to set your goal, set your intention, and give it attention. I mean, if you think about it, anything that's happening in our lives is a result of how much attention we give it. You know, I mean, yeah. no, no. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, I, an example of this is, you know, I know, I know how much, you know, I want to net a year. Um, and, uh, uh, like that is woven through my passwords for all, for ever, from, from everything. Right. So I'm constantly mm -hmm. putting that number in my head, uh, and it's in front of me in, in many different ways for you, Dan, the, the repetition, it does, does the repetition breed new habits or, do, or, or does the repetition uh, uh, rewire our brain, or what? What? What is the the magic of repetition? Well, yes, it definitely does breed new habits. Okay. Definitely, uh, I would agree. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if you do a practice a ritual over and over and over and over and over and over again, eventually it's going to become habit. It's going to become second nature, and you don't have to think much about it. It's like driving a car. Right? I mean, who really gets in the car and think, okay, I'm going to drive the car? But you know, we don't we don't go through the process that way. Um, so yes, it does definitely breed habits which is amazing because i mean think about it i mean if you can be on autopilot after a while <laughs> it's it's pretty cool um you know if you can go into a meeting and and have uh, generally the same outcome 80 percent let's say 80 90 percent positive yeses uh, you know why why not right um but also repetition does this it strengthens your willpower because that's where a lot of people fail they don't have the will to practice you don't need the will to go for your goal let's say but you need the will to practice and most people can't do that. And I, I find that a, a bit surprising. I don't know why, but I just, you know, I look around the world and I talk to people and I'm wondering, you know, why the hell can't you do this every day? Why can't you? You really want it. Yes, I want it. Well, then why aren't you doing it? I mean, what's, you know, okay, it's not the right way. Fine. Well, that's the right the way. You're kinesthetic. Fine. Then, then do it that way. <laughs> you know, do it some way or another. Listen to an audio book or whatever, whatever it is. But if you have to do something every day that's going to get you to where you want, what is it? and then figure that out and keep doing it. If you're talking about me personally, I do many things every day that create new habits that are practices that are moving to me, me towards my goals. And it's all an investment. It's all, if you want to say a future investment, and it's going to get me to where I want to go. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but it's going to get me to where I want to go. Why? Because I'm using the same principles that Nikola Tesla used to create, you know, whatever he did, the, uh, alternator and all sorts of other inventions yeah what i don't know what is that thing called um i know i know exactly what you're talking about um i was i was i'm in san diego i just what they have that that tesla coil in uh in la at um i don't know some museum yeah anyway, i saw it there okay so so the the what would you say i mean look here's what i would say right if somebody says i have a goal I want to make a million dollars. Okay. I really, and, and I really want to make a million dollars. I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out what you got to do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, monthly basis to get you there. And for me, if, 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 if we, we have our goal of a million dollars, we have our daily, weekly, monthly tasks. And if they're not doing their tasks, I would say that you just don't want it, man. You know, p pick a new number, right? You either one don't want it. Um, or, uh, or you, you, you. This goes back to self doubt, right? You don't believe you, you're not, you know, you don't believe you're good enough, smart enough, uh, or you know, or deserve it. So you know, you're not, you're not, you're not doing the the, the daily things that you need to do. How? Well, number one, I'll let you respond to that, and then I have another follow up question. Well, sure. I mean, let me just comment on this too, right? I mean, what is a belief? And my my perspective is a belief is a chronic pattern of thought, right? Mm -hmm. So. You know, so, so yeah, if, uh, if I understand your question correctly, I mean, if they're, if they're not getting to where they want to go, then, you know, what's, you know, what's wrong with the setup? You know, again, everybody learns differently, right? So I could tell somebody to write something out every day, every day, every day, because that works for me, but it might not work for you. It might not work for many people. 
some people maybe need, need to hear it or they need to say it as they're walking and talking or something like that. But, you know, the, the method is different for everybody. And maybe if one way doesn't work, maybe there's another way. Or maybe there's a limiting belief that stems back from, you know, when I was a kid, we couldn't afford things. And I was told, you know, there's not enough money. And where are you going to get the money for that? Or All that kind of languaging is a poison to the mind, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's a limitation. And, and that poisoning is out there. Why? Well, because what, what have we had since, you know, the First World War? First, there's a war, uh, First World War, there's a Second World War, there's all sorts of famines and problems, there's all sorts of issues around the world, and people are letting money control them. I mean, if you think, if we're talking about money here, right? What's controlling people? Why is money controlling them? I don't Why? know. Well, because, I, I say because of all these problems that we've had. And because people had, don't realize that they've let this control them. They're chasing after something that's virtual now. <laughs> I mean, what, what is money? People don't even use cash anymore. Or yeah. they, they use cards, right. right? So, you know, so, I mean, here's the thing. I think it's, it's a limitation in the mind. And it's something that has been passed down and passed down and passed down and passed down. And people don't realize that they have these inner conversations in their mind. And especially about money, and if we're talking about a million dollars, I mean, that might seem like a great number or maybe even a big number for some people, but it just, it, it, it may not be, they may not even be able to picture themselves over on the other side having the million dollars. And if they can't do that, forget it. It's, yeah. it's, that's a wasted effort. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so, so you, you brought up something, and again, I don't want to take us too off, far off track here, but um, I'm trying to zero in on this a little bit. You know, you said that money's not real, right? And money's not real, especially today. You know, I, I worry a little bit with my kids because, you know, there's, there's an abstraction of money, right? Um, I, I recently heard a story of, uh, of uh, a, a two kids uh, talking to an adult, and then the, the adult said something like, hey, I make half a million bucks a year, and the kids were like, oh, pfft. What's that? A half a million bucks is nothing. And he's like, "Well, how in the like how do you how do you come up with this?" And they're like, "Yeah, cuz I have a million dollars in my, you know, in my video game account." Right? This is some kind of driving game, right? So, there's this abstraction of money that we're dealing with today, you know, throughout the card. Again, I'm worried about my kids cuz I don't I, I honestly, I, I keep 100 bucks in my wallet just in case, but I just use my cards everywhere, right? So, what is money? So, so is is this this notion, this abstraction of money, you know, do you think that that somehow how this same type of abstraction uh, correlates to people's idea of success, um, and uh, and because it's virtual, that 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 it, it, the the real driver isn't there anymore. Well, I think so, but I mean, look at this. I've I've done a bit of research, so I mean, look where money started. Money started after we had gold coins. So we took gold coins, we converted it to useless paper and metal coins. Right, mm-hmm. so we we converted into something that's completely useless, and and then and now look today is gold bullion worth anything? Not that much, right? <laughs> it's you know it doesn't it does it's not a good way to back a, a country or uh, you know it's not necessarily considered an asset anymore, at least from what I understand in the business world. So anyway, but here's the thing. I mean, so we convert gold into useless paper and coins, and then you know we start passing that around and doling it out, and 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 today it's all virtual it's all credit cards and yeah i think there's you know because it's not so tangible and it's on a card and you can buy as much as you want for most people i guess you know you have lots of credit and uh i mean they just keep giving me more and more credit so you know and and it doesn't seem like it's it's very tangible and um yeah i mean it's just all virtual but i think the the core thing is it's these internal conversations that we're having about money and when we go to buy something I think that's where the people get stuck. And the, the guy that wants to make a million dollars, if he is going out and buying things and looking at it and saying, eh, should I buy that pair of jeans? They're 60 bucks. Yeah, I usually bear the, I buy the $20 ones. Yeah, that, that conversation is going to kill his million dollar dream, potentially. Right? What, what do you mean? You can overcome that. Yeah, I don't know where you're shopping, man. I mean, jeans, jeans, you know, go to J. Crew, a pair of jeans is, you know, 120 bucks. Uh, so I don't know where, you know, Levi's are 60 bucks at Sears. But, but what, 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 do, what do you mean? So, um, um, are you, are you tapping or ranting the notion that people want instant gratification? Uh, you know, you pick up your credit card, you go out to J. Crew, you buy whatever you want, and then you, you you and pay for it later. And the fact that you can't get instant gratification, you know, success at its highest level, making a million dollars, you know, you can't get that on an instant basis. That that kills people's motivations. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. 
What I'm, what I'm saying is that, that people are having these conversations inside their head. Right? That, that's well, what I'm referring to. What, what's that and, sound like, though? Tell me what. The, tell me what conversation you're referring to. Well, like like I'm saying, if people are making buying decisions, it could be buying a car, it could be buying clothing. But the point is this: if they're having a, a limiting thought or some sort of roadblock with respect to buying something, whether they think they're worth it or whether they think they can afford it or any of those kind of questions around money, because that's what we were talking about earlier, right? If, if they're having any challenges whatsoever, mm-hmm. getting the thing that they want, if they look at that thing, if they look at that car and they say, I want that car, but then they have all these limiting thoughts in their head, it's just not going to happen. It's right. a roadblock. Okay. Right? It, it's, it's dead end. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I get it. All right. We're going to start wrapping up here. Um, just a couple questions. Um, I know you are a guy that, uh, that, uh, you know, believes in investing in oneself. Um, um, when it comes to investing yourself, and I think, I think this is a, this is a mistake or, or a problem that a lot of people, a lot of commoners have, right? Uh, civilians is that, uh, you know, they, they, you know, in terms of hiring a coach or getting some help, you know, to get uh, where they need to go, um, they look at the number, right? They look at that number of a thousand dollars a month for a coach as an expense rather than an investment. What, how would you, for everybody listening, how would you sort of adjust their head if they're looking at getting some help, right? A coach, and they see it as an expense rather than an investment. Well, number one, I mean, if you look at the things that stop most people from hiring a coach, at least from what I've seen, it's either money, time, or energy. And those are the typical excuses. Uh, money is usually a big one too, right? Because mm-hmm. then they, for most people, if they ever never hired a coach or they've never had one, how can they foresee spending a thousand bucks? Some people might be looking at themselves, well, you know, what could I do a thousand bucks? I can pay my mortgage or pay a part of my mortgage or rent or something like that, right? And so they start comparing, you know, what's, what's this worth? What am I going to get? I'm going to get, you know, a couple of calls with this uh, coach and, and, you know, what am I going to get out of it, right? But the point is this, um, you know, every successful leader out there has a coach, has a mentor. Every one of them. They all do. Yeah. And, you know, some of them, you know, so the point is this. If we're going to get out of where we want to be or, or get out of where we are to where we want to go, you know, what, what are we going to do? What's, what's going to happen? And I think that, you know, if you can get a helping hand, somebody to kind of take you up. I mean, I think of it like a, a Sherpa and going up the mountain. I mean, how many people go up Everest without, without help, right, without the guides? I mean, almost nobody. I don't, I don't know anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anybody. So maybe, maybe there are some, but you know, there's people probably a small, solid. small percentage. Yeah. <clears throat> of course. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, but the majority, they go up there with guides, with support, with the, with the people that know how to take them up the mountain. It's the same thing with the coach. You know, we get all motivated. We're going to do something. I see this all the time. People get all motivated. They're like, yeah, I'm going to hire a coach. And, you know, and it could be a friend or something, you know, telling me this. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> right. And then you talk to them and then they get all motivated. And the next thing you know, oh, you know, my, my, uh, my kid's going to, you know, go to a private school or something. I got to invest in that. You know, it's like, well, wait a second. You had this big dream. You wanted something. And then next thing you know, you just shot it down right away because of some of their expense. But, you know, the whole thing is, it's a guide. It's a guidance system. I mean, a coach is not somebody who takes you by the hand and takes you, you know, step by, well, I don't know, maybe they do take you step by step, but you know, the whole point is this: they're not going to make you do everything and they're not going to uh, force you, you know, the way it's, it's about a guidance system. All the work happens internally. It's almost like, you know, uh, therapy. <laughs> I mean, how many, how many people go to therapy and think the therapist cured them? Well, it's, it's themselves curing them. The therapist is just asking the right questions, right? Agreed. It's all about asking the right questions. And guess what? The subconscious mind does this. It responds, it reciprocates, it magnifies and multiplies all your thoughts. So if you put the right thoughts in, guess what? Out comes the right response, out comes the right stuff. And so that's what a coach does. They help the, the client, they help the person to get right on track, stay on track, and keep going on that track. Accountability, commitment, that's that's the focus, right? It's all about, you know, what what's the way, what's the path to get there, and then how do we stay on that path to get to the next step and then the next step and the next step. And you know, and then just you know look back and say, okay, now I can see how that's happening. And yes, this guidance system, this coach is working for me. And uh, you know, it, I mean you think about it, <clears throat> there's no teams in the world that doesn't have a coach. And even if we see solo players uh, you know, so let's say tennis players, 
they're not by themselves. They have coaches, they have teams of people all the time. They, they look like they're by themselves on the court, but they always have a support system. They always have a guidance right. system. Right, 100%. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay, we yeah. all, look, we, Dan, we always ask for book recommendation. Uh, sure. Here's the typical setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? I'm going to say Dr. Joseph Murphy's uh, uh, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Okay. So everybody, yeah. if you want to get that, uh, is it, do you know if it's on Audible? Uh, yes, I have it on Audible. Okay. Yeah, it's on Audible. So every, sure. if, you, yeah. if you guys want to get that book, get a copy on us. Just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Last question for you, Dan, real quick. Do you have any daily habit or routine that you think has contributed to uh, your success today? Absolutely. It's a, what I call a morning success ritual, and it's a routine that I do every single morning, and it basically gets myself uh, going emotionally, physically, mentally, everything. It includes uh, meditation, a bit of uh, exercise, Tabata is what I do, uh, some yoga, and, uh, and also some reading, writing, setting intentions. It's something that you, know, you, can't, you can't do without. And, and again, you know, if, if we're looking at leaders in the world, what are they doing? They have a morning ritual. They have some sort of routine that gets them going. Most other people get up, look at their emails, get on somebody else's agenda and get a totally off track and they don't know where the hell they are come noon. So Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, it, how uh, if somebody wants to find out more about you, Dan, how uh, where can they go? Well, they can definitely go to my website, danlefave.com, and, uh, and check me out there. I'm on all the social networks as well, uh, but by that same name, and, uh, and they can find me there. And if they want a, a productivity tip, they just send me a message. I've, I've got a great uh, short video where it talks about that morning ritual and how they can set it up. And I give them a, a checklist they can they can follow along so they can set up their own. Because not everybody's the same, but you know, morning ritual is, is amazing. I'm sure you do something of some kind. I do. I do. All right, Dan. Hey, buddy. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's stay in touch. All right. All right. Thanks a million. See, see you, Appreciate see you, it. Bye. Let's go. 